Needham Schools, we developed a framework uh, for educational excellence, innovation, and by the way, equity. A really important concept because we believe all students should have an opportunity to learn at a high level. And this, this framework is a portrait of a Needham graduate. And since we've developed the portrait, we've developed some, a strategic plan to go with it to make it a reality. Here's a question I have for all of you. In 2032, what do you think the world will be like? I feel like people are becoming more like open to things. I think people will become more collaborative and people will share their lives more with other mm -hmm. people. And they'll, be, they'll build a bigger network between each other for social connections, um, between like social media and social networking and jobs and all these different um, things now that will be on technology. And uh, relating back to technology, I think it can go two ways as far as the future. Technology can be a really useful tool in building relationships and connections with people in the outside world that everyone needs and does. Um, but it also, if we don't use it that way, it could be a potential harm. As we're developing and as we realize that there's talents in, in minds from all over the world, we'll be able to connect with more people that are different from us, uh, but could, could work with us. Um, so I think on one hand, uh, people might struggle more with connecting uh, with people around them or even through technology, but um, with a live person in front of you, like a video call or a FaceTime. But I think that people would get much better in the future at making those connections on social media and finding out more about people and about topics in general and hopefully educating themselves. I don't want like something, a world in the future where the everybody is integrated on phones or devices or something like that. You can't lose that skill. It's a skill that will that you'll always have to have. And if you lose that skill or eventually don't use it as much, then it may be a problem someday. I think that technology has its pros and cons. So yes, technology could be like something that could advance like socially and social media, but also it could like looking like to the future, it could if you look at it, technology could take away like different job opportunities too because we'll like invent robots that do everything for us. I think about the safety of our children. Was it like mean? like the safety of children in school or just like what what people of authority are doing to protect kids especially with like gun violence and things going on lately. I think one thing that definitely worries me is how am I going to know what I need to do next? Where, who do I go to if I need help if my parents don't know what's ahead? You know, your parents can only teach you so much from what they know. But as we said, as the, as the years keep going, new things come up and, and you have to stay on top of it all. So I think part of me is scared that that we have to pave that path, and I know that's, that's hard work. What if there is no path? Or what if the path is unclear? What experience in school do you think you need to help do what Adia is suggesting? One of the things in the portrait of a graduate was independent learners and like resilient learners. I think you're gonna need to be a leader in your own life, and you said it was like, we're like the drivers of our learning, and I think we're gonna need to be driving and like making that path. It could be for a next generation or it could just be for us. We as students, we should get more involved. So we should take risks in class. Like when the teacher asks about something, raise your hand. Or even if it's wrong, like just take risks. Like think outside of the box. I've had so much um, freedom with my projects and in public speaking, I had to do a speech and I got to pick my topic. And I was just thinking like, what's something that I wanna educate people on? What do I want people to know? And I ended up also figuring out certain things myself and I ended up figuring out oh this is what I'm interested in and this is what I like and I feel like that's also helping me kind of figure out what I want to do in the future. How could teachers, how could your teachers for students today and tomorrow, how could they provide some more voice and independence 
for you or for your classmates? What's a couple examples? I think starting small, even working on team building activities and and, and just expanding the kind of um, the the I would say like the routine of you're not just coming into class you're sitting you're learning but instead maybe you're coming in you're getting warmed up you're you're expanding your mind to to be ready to think in many different ways and then from there go on to a next level of okay now we have a bunch of different options on how we can attack a certain uh, assignment or something an example I was gonna say in both my English and bio class this week we're doing a project that's pretty open-ended for English we're looking at the feminist lens and how that affects, like a, a choice for a project is how it affects um, an everyday thing that we can choose. And my group, we're, we're looking at songs in particular, um, specific hip hop rappers and how they portray a uh, woman in that. Um, and it's pretty open ended and it's actually something that with that little structure of this, it has to look at the feminist lens. We're, we're learning so much about this and something that is in everyday life that everyone listens to songs. Those type of projects are very important because they help the teacher see like what your potential is and like the type of skills that you have. So then they can help you if you have a difficulty in something and it also helps you with the skills that you need when you reach like the real world. We're not like a window, they, they can't really see us and they won't be able to see like right away what we're going through and what the struggles we have. So then we, it's like as students we have to like open up and then we have to tell them so the teachers could help us. So it's really important to like find that path that like belongs to you on your own instead of someone like telling you what to do. If you're always told what to do like once you graduate from like high school or college and like you get a, you need to get a job but like if you are if you're always told what to do like and you don't really know like what you like to do or that stuff like it's hard to harder to find a job. Have you seen any opportunities to bring some of your learning together that you're doing right now and say, geez, I wish those two teachers would do a mashup? Well, in physics last year with uh, Mr. Sherry, we um, joined classes with a pre-calc class, I'm pretty sure. And so we met in the library and we did, we worked through some physics and math problems together. And I thought that was a great way to bring science and math uh, into one class for a day, which was very cool. Adi? Uh, I take a class called GBP, Greater Boston Project, which is an English class, a history class, and a math class all in one and it's a uh, double period and you learn a lot about Boston as well as uh, working in teams. Who else has had that experience? It was cave paintings. Cave we did, paintings? Yeah. So we oh, did yeah. art, social studies, and there's even a little bit of English because we're also working on inferences. We could work on and we could like inference about what the painting's about. We just had several examples from elementary to middle school to high school of like integrating these types of classes and in the real life in the real world outside of school that's that's what it's about it's about putting all the tools in your toolbox together to form your identity and form your community and relationships and prepare you for jobs and just your life so I think uh, definitely integrating those types of classes and stuff is something that Needham does that we'll continue to do that's really helpful. Does learning have to happen inside the box of the Needham Public Schools? What else do you think could happen? We have a whole community out there. We have a whole world out there. What do you think is realistic? What else could we do? More yeah. field trips. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Yeah. What, so, what does that mean? I think that's like learning about something and then actually going to see it it impacts more than just learning about these things and just them going away. But if you actually experience it or you go to it, it sticks better, I guess. Outside of school, like jobs and volunteer experiences and research you get and other uh, opportunities like that, you learn other things besides just um, about like the history and culture. You learn about being responsible and about like serving others and serving your community around you and just being kind to others and getting all these different skills that you might not necessarily get in school. We see the same people the same things and we think like this is this is the normal thing this is what things should be like but then when we expand our horizons and we actually do things where we're meeting more people and we're seeing new things then we just automatically become more open you could see more about the different things that people are going through rather than the specific things you see in school what other people are going through that you don't really notice because 
you're just like in your own little world. I want to talk to you about equity and I want to talk to you about the kinds of teachers you want in front of you. What do you notice about our teachers and principals? Who, who, what would you want to see in our teachers? I would want them to be like more different and then like we're used to being then like we're used to having them be like all white but it would, I like would want it to be different. I would want schools to have all different races for teachers. I found out my guidance counselor was a black woman. It was like surprising to me. And I feel like it's it's bad that it's surprising. I think that there should be more teachers, like for example, for Spanish, um, there should be more Spanish speaking teachers, not white teachers speaking the language. I mean, teaching the language, you know what I'm saying? And like for French, like people who have studied there or are from there. I would like my teachers to be able to be supportive and also make like a fun and comfortable environment in the classroom at the same time. So then like not only are you like just learning something, but you're gonna, you can actually like enjoy learning about it and you can like work as like a team, as a, as a class, as a community to work on it. What's a piece of advice you have for me about making the Needham Public Schools experience inclusive, welcoming, and equitable for every single student. Give them what they actually need and not just the same thing for all the students. There has to be like more of like you need to learn this because you can use this now and some things that we learn like you just don't really use as much as you sometimes would if this was 30 years ago. I think we can build biases and prejudice over other people without really getting to know them and really experiencing um, people of different race or different religions, different culture, different sexualities or anything, uh, any diversity. I think if we really build that bubble, it can create like a negative stereotypes for other people. So I think we really need to diversify to, to kind of introduce people to um, new kinds of religions and cultures and races. Because we all live to make an impact on something, whether that be like other people or on the world in general. And like what keeps me up at night is figuring out like what, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do that's different than the other seven billion people? Thanks to our students for sharing their perspectives and voices about their experiences and hopes for their education and future. Please review the handout you'll receive about the portrait of a Needham graduate and the priorities that shape our five-year strategic plan. This is our work, and it's our commitment to our young people. Make sure you get involved and ask questions as we move forward. It's exciting, and it will also push us to think and act differently. We will work together to achieve this portrait and ensure we prepare all students to be creative thinkers and problem solvers, communicators and collaborators, socially and culturally responsive contributors, responsible and resilient individuals, and empowered learners. Mm -hmm.